Okay, Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13, verses 54 through 58. Matthew 13, 54 through 58. And when he was come into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue, insomuch that they were astonished and said, Whence hath this man this wisdom and these mighty works? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters? Are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? And they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save in his own country and in his own house. More than a carpenter's son. Jesus Christ was much more than a carpenter's son. I want to say to you this morning that there is power in belief and there is power in unbelief. Amen. True. There is power in both belief and unbelief. Think about it. Great power, when we, we look in the Word of God, we discover that great power is found when people believe God. Amen. Amen. I would dare you to challenge you this morning to believe God. That eventually these seats are going to be filled. Amen. Amen. Throughout the Word of God, we can see this fact attested to. There is power demonstrated when people believe God. Abraham believed God and became the father of a great nation. Israel believed God. And they walk through the Red Sea on dry land. Amen. Opened it up, let it through. David believed God and slew a giant named Goliath. When he was a kid. With a slingshot. He was just a kid too. Naaman believed God and was healed of the dreaded disease of leprosy. Daniel believed God, and as he spent the night in the lion's den, the lions couldn't touch him. Two blind men believed God and received their sight. Jairus believed God and his daughter was raised from the dead. Yes. If we wish to see God at work, we're going to have to believe Him. Amen. Yeah, that's right. And so great power is found in belief. On the other hand, we need to understand there is great power in unbelief. Adam and Eve didn't believe the Word of God, and as a result, they brought a curse upon the entire earth. That's true. And even the earth itself. Millions in the days of Noah rejected and refused to believe God and they were destroyed in the flood. The flood. Pharaoh refused to believe God and he lost everything, even his life. In unbelief, Israel wandered around and around and around in the wilderness, never entering into the promised land, 
because of their unbelief. Moses disobeyed God and as a result he failed himself to enter into the promised land. Remember that fellow named Nebuchadnezzar? Mm -hmm. King of Babylon? Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe God and he ended up living like an animal. Sound like some folks today in our world, doesn't it? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. The rich young ruler refused. refused to believe God. And he entered eternity <coughs> with no hope. <coughs> multitudes. Multitudes of people rejected Christ. And entered into eternity with no hope. Most of the scribes and the Pharisees died in their unbelief. Exactly. Judas. Judas Iscariot betrayed Christ. And as a result, he was condemned and ended up committing suicide by hanging himself. There's power in unbelief. Unbelief makes men do crazy things. Faith has the power to bring forgiveness of sin and eternal life. Unbelief has the power to hold people Captive to their sins and condemnation. True. Belief offers happiness, joy, peace, and righteousness, while unbelief offers sorrow, pain, anguish, and separation from God. John MacArthur said, All unbelief is a matter of the will. Unbelief is a choice. It is saying no to God in spite of all the evidence. Exactly. God has given us plenty of evidence, folks. He's given us such evidence that the Word of God says that they are without excuse. Amen. I want you to leave here this morning understanding this. Unbelief <coughs> refuses to see and accept Jesus Christ for who He is. Unbelief refuses to see and accept Jesus for who He is. Now the first thing we need to see is this. Unbelief blurs the obvious. Unbelief blurs the obvious. Here Jesus' hometown. Today we would say his home is. They saw him as simply just another hometown boy. Louis like that. Huh? <laughs> yeah, they saw him as just another homie. That was their understanding that was their comprehension of him yet they had watched him perform miracles they had seen him do great things <coughs> they had been impressed by his great wisdom yet they were angered 
Because he exposed their hypocrisy and their unbelief. That's true. Yes. They, were, they were liars. They do the same thing today. On a previous visit, when he had visited his own hometown, Nazareth, he made them so angry in that first visit that they tried to throw him over the cliff. And here he is returning home after some time, returning back to his own community, and their attitude hasn't changed any at all. How can a people see so much and yet be so blind to that which is so obvious? How can a man look up into the heavens at night and see the stars and the planets? How can a man look up in the daytime and see the sun and at nighttime and see the moon and look around at the glory and the majesty and the beauty of this planet and see and understand and believe that there is no God? He is blind to the object. Jesus had done things that only God could do. Amen. Jesus had demonstrated the wisdom of no other man in history. Jesus had exercised the authority of no other man in history. And he had taught the truth on just about every issue there was to discuss with regards to the matters of life and death. He addressed it all in just a little over three years. You talk about an action-packed movie. People in his hometown they acted just like the scribes and the Pharisees. They refused to make that connection. In their unbelief, they rejected both his divine power and his divinity. They were so in love with their sin that God's truth meant nothing to them. Let me say that again. Because our world is full of it, folks. They were so in love with their sin that God's truth was of no avail to them. In the midst of all the overwhelming evidence that he had presented to him, they rejected him. They refused the forgiveness of God that he offered and they opted to continue living in their sin. They denied the light. Why? They denied the light because they preferred the darkness. Good time people. You know there are folk who play all night, sleep all night. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, no pain. Yeah. They sleep all day and play all night. Why? Because they love the darkness more than they love the light. That's true. It's easier for them to get away with their sinful deeds in the darkness. They like cockroaches. They don't want the light to be shown. They 
preferred their own way over the Lord's way. Yes. John MacArthur said this, when a person willfully rejects the Lord, even the most compelling evidence will not convince him of divine truth. Why is it when we look at trials in our justice system today, you will discover that one of the first things that any defense attorney will do is try to find jurors that he believes will vote the way he wants them to vote. Regardless of the evidence, regardless of the facts. That's what these people were guilty of. They denied the clear evidence and the facts of the case. Unbelief blurs the obvious. Unbelief refuses to see and accept Jesus Christ for who he is. Second thing this morning, unbelief builds up the irrelevant. Amen. Unbelief will build up the irrelevant. They rejected the obvious, and in doing so, they focused on those things that were irrelevant. You see, they had watched Jesus grow up. Remember, Miss Louise, they were his homies. They had watched him grow up. They had been with him many times in the synagogue as he grew up as a child. Preached to him, too. But here he is now. He's become a great leader with multitudes of people who are flocking after him. He's had no formal training. He hasn't been recognized by the religious leaders of his day. And what they see, the only thing they see is a carpenter's son, the son of Mary, who they knew his <laughs> brothers and sisters. He was just another homie to them. Joseph had been a carpenter. In other words, he was one of those who labored with his hands. Perhaps he had built homes in Nazareth. Perhaps he had built windows and doors in the community. He was just an ordinary laborer like many in his time. Most likely Jesus had learned from Joseph the trades of a carpenter. But I want to say to you this morning, he was much more than a carpenter because he himself had designed and not only designed, but had created the entire universe in the eternal past. Amen. 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 That's right. That's right. Jesus Christ was sinless and perfect, even as a child. Oh, how many, how many parents and grandparents would love to have the perfect child? Some of them think they do, but how wrong are they? Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's true. You've known a few, haven't you? Oh, yes. <coughs> to them, he was just another child. To them, he was just another young man. Why? His family were just commoners and the people stumbled over that. They rejected him as a human teacher.
future, much less the Messiah. It's amazing to me how man can use the most smallest, irrelevant issues as an excuse for his unbelief. Folks will give you all kind of reasons why they don't believe. Mm -hmm. That's what they did when he came back to his hometown. They made up all kind of excuses for their unbelief. Things haven't changed very much with the nature of man, have they? People don't like the attitude of those who witness Jesus to them. Mm -hmm. They say that the church is just full of a bunch of hypocrites. Preachers too loud. Preachers don't speak loud enough. Preachers too hard. It's too easy. It's too formal. It's too informal. One smoke screen after another to justify their unbelief. They dismissed him. Why? Because they had known him as a child. And they refused to accept him despite the overwhelming evidence. Pride. Jealousy, resentment, petty feelings, and envy became the barriers to the salvation that he offered them. Unbelief builds up the irrelevant. Unbelief refuses to see and accept Jesus for who he is. Third this morning, unbelief blinds men to the truth. Unbelief blinds men to the truth. They were offended by what they perceived him to be. They were offended by what they perceived him to be. I wonder how many times you and I as Christians perceive things incorrectly. They were offended at his claim. Offended at his background, his education, his training, his lack of religious status. All of these irrelevant issues. Their unbelief blinded them to the truth that he taught. If a man is going to see God at work, He's going to have to be willing to be broken and believe. <clears throat> Has to be willing to be plowed by the truth. You know folks don't like it when preachers plow today. Fact is, those who are unwilling to confess and to forsake their sin will be offended yeah, you tell them. by this book. Exactly. They'll be offended by the gospel of Jesus Christ and until a man reaches the point that he is willing to be broken and believe God, he will remain blind Amen. to the truth. Amen. To them, Jesus was just another child in the neighborhood that they had grown up with. In their minds, their perception, he was no leader. He was no official. 
And he certainly wasn't the Son of God. He was just the mere son of a carpenter. <coughs> and even his own family, his own family was blinded by unbelief. As a matter of fact, his own family was so blinded, they themselves perceived that he was absolutely out of his mind. Unbelief blinds men to the truth. Unbelief refuses to see and accept Jesus Christ for who he is. Last, quickly this morning, unbelief blocks the supernatural. Unbelief blocks the supernatural. Let me tell you. Jesus Christ said He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He was supernatural yesterday. He is supernatural today. And He will be supernatural tomorrow. Amen. All three of them. You and I know and serve a supernatural God who says there is nothing that is too difficult for Him. You and I have no idea just how many miracles Jesus did perform. All we have is a handful in the gospel. Yes. Some of the miracles that he performed were a response to faith, but probably most of the miracles that he performed had absolutely nothing to do with the faith of others. No, he performed most of his miracles in order to strengthen the faith of those who dared to believe him. Amen. And so we're told here that he goes to Nazareth and due to the unbelief of his own people there, he refused to perform miracles. In other words, their unbelief Stop the flow of divine blessing into their life. Amen. Now Jesus didn't lack the power to perform miracles in that. No, he's still right. And that he had the same power in that earth that he had anywhere else. He still got it. Yeah, he will always have it. He didn't lack the power. No, he was simply the oh Lord. Here's a sermon itself. Jesus didn't come to town to entertain folks. Amen. He came to give them the truth. Whoo, I might have to preach that next week. <laughs> the sin of unbelief, folks, is the most tragic sin of all. It's belief, faith in Christ that saves the souls of men. And it's unbelief, rejection of Christ, that leaves a man in his sin and in his condemnation. Faith in Christ will walk a man through the gates of heaven. Rejection of Christ will drop a man into the flaming okay. fires of an eternal inferno. We will never see God move in our lives unless we dare to believe. Amen. I would suggest to you that God longs to do a work in our lives, folks. He longs to do a work on this piece of property. He longs to do a work in this facility. He longs to do a work in His body in this nation and around the world. The author of Hebrews said this, without faith it is impossible to please God. Amen. Unbelief blocks the supernatural. Unbelief refuses to see and accept 
Jesus Christ for whom he really is. Mark chapter 9, I close with verses 30 of 23 through 25. Jesus said to them, If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter into him no more. Amen. Multitudes are sitting in church seats across this country this morning in unbelief. Many of them are lost and on their way to hell. Many of them are wandering around and around in the wilderness. They have no victory in their lives. They have no idea what it means to be more than a conqueror in Christ. Many of them are living defeated lives. Why? Because they're living in unbelief. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the Word of God. You want to move out of the realm of unbelief into the realm of belief? Bury your face in this book. Amen. Humble yourself and get on your knees before God. Amen. And if need be, skip a meal. Or skip a meal or skip a day or skip two days or whatever without eating. And it'll drive out the unbelief. Amen. You hear this morning? Where do you stand with regard to your faith? Where do you stand with regards to believing God? Do you really believe Him? Yes. Do you really believe God? Listen, there are times in all of our lives when the enemy comes in with a flood of doubt and questions and he'll throw the fiery darts of irrelevance at you. He'll just constantly barrage you with it, and he'll get you down, and he'll get the beating on you. Yeah, you still believe. But the enemy plants doubts in your heart, in your mind, with all of these little irrelevant seeds here and there, and eventually they build up and they build up, and you find yourself sitting on the sideline. Sometimes we have to go to God and we have to say, Lord, I still believe. But help me in my own faith. If you're here this morning, you need prayer for whatever reason. You don't know Christ as your personal Savior and you wish to. You're here because you're like old Peter and the boys that have little faith. You want to grow and mature and develop in the faith. You want to become strong and bold and courageous and victorious and experience what it really means to be more than a conqueror in Christ. Amen. You come this morning as we sing this closing hymn. Let me pray with you and pray for you.